Jean-Pierre Lambert, an analyst at Kifi Briet and Woods, says it could run to as much as 200 billion euros. Jean-Pierre, thank you so much for joining us. Now, I want to Good come morning. back to, to Dexia in just a second. But first of all, in terms of the UK banks in general, they've been downgraded because there's a concern that Moody's has that if one of them goes bad, then the government won't step in. Is this a concern that we should also have for some of the European banks, that if we have a real problem, they will just let it go, creating a Lehman Brothers type effect? Well, I think uh, we have to distinguish uh, between, uh, you know, letting go back. I don't think a government will want to do that, but they will want to address the issue. And what we see is that uh, public deficit is a constraint for the governments to activate uh, the mechanism they could take to uh, save the banks or to keep them as they are. So if we go back to the example of Dexia, the two governments, especially Belgium, have a constraint in terms of public deficit. Public deficit of Belgium is 96% of GDP, France is 86, there's more scope. But obviously, they can't do the same thing as they did in 2008. And what we see here is a dismantling of the bank uh, to, uh, to uh, keep the customers and alive up, yeah. and shore up and, and keep the deposits there. But if you look at the French banks as well, over the last few weeks, they've announced deleveraging, yeah. which is another way to prop up capital. But so let me ask, first of all, on Dixia, what do you see happening? Are we going to see a sovereign wealth fund possibly from the Middle East coming in and buying some of the more healthy assets? And what happens to this bad bank? Well, uh, the way it's going to work is the healthy parts will be sold, which is asset management, private banking, which is the... Luxembourg part. Mm -hmm. And to whom you think? We, we don't know. Will it be we, a Middle East uh, We heard from the press that maybe Quartau, a sovereign fund, was interested in the private bank. So it's an interesting asset. It's a smaller size. The rumor is about 900 million uh, offer price. But there's also the Belgian retail bank. It's a larger bank, so the, the appetite is more difficult to find among the banks which are currently constrained in terms of capital as well. So the number of potential buyers is limited. That's why the government has to maybe for a period of time, uh, nationalize the bank and negotiate with potential buyers. But yesterday, uh, the French government came out very clearly saying they don't want to take all of the burden. And you're rightly saying that actually Belgium, in terms of uh, the deficit, mm -hmm. doesn't have that much leeway. The danger is, I guess, if France steps in too much, then it puts its AAA credit rating at risk. And if that happens, it will be a disaster for the, for the whole European scene and the EFSF. Yes. But if we take the bad bank, which Dexia is going to be created, let's say 150 billion. Let's say we have the same share of France as last time, which is about 30%. That's only 5% of Belgian GDP as guarantee. It doesn't mean that there are losses. Mm -hmm. So it's manageable. For Belgium, it's a bit different. If they take 60%, that's 25% of their debt to GDP. Not that there will be losses, but potentially they could be, not up to 25%. But You're right. I guess it's, it's a higher weight for Belgium. But in the Eurozone equation, Belgium is less important than France. I mean, we're, we're worried about France also for some of the other banks. Yes. Crédit Agricole, Société Générale, if we have to have more government intervention, um, it, this is going to put serious pressure on, on France. Why have the French so far refused to talk about a recapitalization plan? Well, clearly, if you look at the debt to GDP among the AAA countries, France is, has the highest level of debt to GDP uh, compared to the, all the Eurozone uh, countries. So obviously they're aware of this and they will want to use sparingly the capital injections, if any, to the bank. So currently there are no losses for the French banks. French banks are in relatively good condition. And so it's only an event that there is a shock that maybe a mechanism could be activated and not necessarily through the government. It could be, again, a forced sale of assets or it could be uh, deleveraging, accelerated deleveraging. But, but then why is there so much nervousness on the markets? I understand, you know, the German banks, are, they're saying that they're healthy. They're thinking about a plan. So let's say Greece were default, that's under control. Yes. The French banks, every two weeks, we're seeing, you know, Société Générale or BNP down 6% one day, 10% the other day. I yes. mean, we need to, to have a clearer picture of what's yes. going on. What's happening here is that uh, the French banks have the largest exposure to the Euro periphery. They come for about 36% of the total Euro periphery debt, if you, if you include uh, Belgium in that case. And in terms of percentage of NAV, they have about, I mean, BNP has a, something like 40% uh, exposure to Italy, so that's a big chunk. Same with Critical, 35%. So what we have here is the market uncertain on the potential losses and the assessment depends on an assessment of the political environment. That's why it's so difficult and that's why you have this volatility. 
does in the French, share price. Does the French government have to take a bigger handle on it and say, I'm ready to stand behind the banks? Of course, we also are in election year next year for Nicolas Sarkozy, so that makes the political wrangling all that more difficult in dealing with the banks. Well, indeed. I mean, if there is a, an intervention, capital intervention, under which form will it be ordinary capital or will it be preferential? So that's an issue because it has been criticized in the past that the state, when it intervened, didn't get enough uh, upside. So maybe there will be a form of dilution. And that's also the reason why uh, the market is a bit concerned about what could happen in terms of capital injection.